Raiders of the Lost Ark is not only considered one of the greatest films ever made, but it also played a significant role in helping to create the formula for modern action movies. However, Raiders was almost a very different movie, as the whip-wielding archaeologist would have been named Indiana Smith and played by Tom Selleck. So let's dive in and find out how we went from that to the movie we all know and love, and also find out what could have been Raiders of the Lost Ark and the adventures of Indiana Smith. While writing American Graffiti, George Lucas got bored and began working on other things to avoid doing what he was supposed to be doing. And out of that procrastination came two ideas for films. The first was a feature film adaptation of the Flash Gordon serials of the 1930s. And the second was an original idea about an archaeologist looking for supernatural artifacts, also based on serials from the 30s and 40s, like Zorro, who not only used a whip, but performed daring stunts such as leaping from a horse to a moving truck in Zorro Rides Again. After finishing American Graffiti, Lucas decided to move ahead with adapting Flash Gordon, feeling it had more potential of the two ideas. But unable to attain the rights, he opted instead to create his own space opera from the ground up. Still, Lucas never lost his desire to make his film about the archaeologist, and would approach filmmaker Philip Kaufman to write and direct it, while Lucas worked on Star Wars. Kaufman proposed the Ark of the Covenant as the story's MacGuffin, drawing inspiration from his former dentist, who Kaufman remembered being obsessed with the lost relic and its alleged powers. The MacGuffin would also give the film its title, Raiders of the Lost Ark, with the idea being that each new installment in the franchise would be called Raiders of whatever that film's MacGuffin would be. This is also why Spielberg to this day calls each indie film either Raiders 1, 2, 3, or 4, instead of by their actual titles. Lucas would name the character Indiana after his dog, an Alaskan Malamute named Indiana, who also served as the inspiration for Chewbacca. Lucas also wanted Indiana to have a generic American surname, and thus named him Indiana Smith. Unfortunately for Lucas, Philip Kaufman would be offered a writing gig to adapt the novel The Outlaw Josie Wales for Clint Eastwood, and would have to leave Raiders, resulting in Lucas putting the project back on the shelf. However, Kaufman would still get a story by credit during the opening titles for his contributions. The day after Star Wars opened, Lucas took a vacation to Hawaii to get away from the stress of opening weekend, where he didn't ensure whether the film would be a hit or not. He'd eventually be joined by Steven Spielberg, who was taking some time off from editing Close Encounters. As they sat on the beach building sandcastles, Spielberg expressed his desire to direct a James Bond film, but lamented that they wouldn't let him because he wasn't English. Lucas, filled with a newfound confidence after learning Star Wars was a massive hit, told Spielberg he had something better, and pitched him on the adventures of Indiana Smith. Spielberg loved the idea and asked to direct it, but Lucas was still committed to Philip Kaufman. However, Lucas promised if Kaufman wasn't interested, Spielberg could do it. Several months later, Kaufman would drop out to direct the right stuff, opening the door for Spielberg to direct. To write it, Spielberg turned to Lawrence Kasdan, impressed by Kasdan's work on Continental Divide, a film about a brash Chicago journalist who falls in love with a woman studying eagles in the mountains reminiscent of a classic Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn comedy. And while Spielberg was so taken with Kasdan's script that he decided to produce it, what was more important was that it captured the 1930s and 1940s sensibility that Spielberg and Lucas wanted for Raiders. Kasdan, who had only been working as a professional screenwriter for about a month, must have felt like he had struck gold, as both he, Lucas, and Spielberg sequestered themselves away in an office for five days to brainstorm ideas for the movie, with the idea being that Kasdan would then go off and write it. The first thing Spielberg wanted changed was Indy's surname, saying it reminded him of the Steve McQueen movie Nevada Smith, resulting in Lucas suggesting Jones instead, probably taken from Alan Ladd's character in China, who not only is named Mr. Jones, but bears a striking resemblance to the now famous character. However, Lucas wanted the character to be more like James Bond, imagining him as not only a kung fu practitioner, but also a playboy, who funds his lifestyle with the spoils from his adventures. For example, Lucas envisioned the scene where Brody goes to visit Jones at his house, with Jones answering the door in a tux, only for Brody to find a beautiful blonde once he steps inside, sipping champagne in Indy's living room. Eventually, both Kasdan and Spielberg would push back, arguing the character was complicated enough being both an adventurer and an archaeologist. However, shades of this idea would appear at the start of Temple of Doom, which would see Indy in a nightclub wearing the same tux Bond wore in Goldfinger. Spielberg, on the other hand, wanted Jones to be an avid gambler and or alcoholic, kind of like Humphrey Bogart's character from The Treasure of the Sierra Madra. This time, it was Lucas's turn to push back, wanting Jones to be a role model for 
for children. Visually, they base the character's look on Charlton Heston's character in Secret of the Incas. In fact, there are several moments from Secret of the Incas that made their way into Raiders. And just like the serials Raiders was based on, a cliffhanger would turn up in the script every 20 pages or so. Except unlike the old serials, audiences wouldn't have to wait a week to find out how the hero escaped the perilous situation. This formula would go on to basically become the staple for every action film to follow. After finishing their five-day story session, Kasdan took everyone's ideas and wrote the screenplay in Spielberg's office, while the director was off making 1941. And this version of the film had several key differences to it. For starters, the headpiece to the staff of Ra in this version was split into two pieces, leading Indy to begin his adventure by going to Shanghai to recover the first piece. Once there, he sneaks into the personal museum of a warlord named Tenku Hawk, where he locates one half of the headpiece. However, before he can steal it, he's stopped by a couple of samurai wielding katanas. Jones drops the first one with two rounds from his pistol, but the second one slices off the barrel of Indy's gun. Indy then uses his whip to strangle the second samurai, who loses consciousness and falls into the glass case holding the headpiece, shattering it and triggering the sound of a giant golden gong, which reverberates throughout the building. Enraged, Hawk grabs a submachine gun and races to the museum, where he finds Jones with the headpiece and sprays the room with bullets. Indy then cuts the gong loose from the ceiling and hides behind it as it rolls towards a window that he dives through to escape. Obviously, this entire sequence would be cut, but repurposed for Temple of Doom, as Lucas and Spielberg felt the script was too long and expensive. And speaking of cut but reused set pieces for Temple of Doom, from here Jones would board a plane to try and get to Marion, who is in Nepal, only to fall asleep and then wake up to find everyone having parachuted out, leading Jones to use an inflatable raft to escape. In the scene where Marion is smuggled around Cairo in a basket while Indy tries to find her, he originally gave chase on a camel, perhaps partly inspired by Spielberg's favorite film, Lawrence of Arabia. Finally, for the climax of the film, a few villains would have survived the opening of the Ark. After Indy and Marion steal it, the villains would have pursued, as Indy and Marion escape in minecarts, leading to a minecart chase, serving as the film's climactic set piece. Again, this entire sequence was deemed too expensive, given the numerous other set pieces already in the film. Additionally, it shifted the focus away from the opening of the Ark, which was sufficiently climactic on its own. And just like the other two set pieces already mentioned, the minecart chase would find its way into the next picture, Temple of Doom. After Kasdan finished the script and delivered it to Lucas, Lucas asked him to do a rewrite on The Empire Strikes Back, since Lee Brackett, the film's writer, had sadly passed away after writing the first draft. Kasdan then asked Lucas, don't you want to read Raiders first? To which Lucas replied, if I read Raiders and hate it, I'll take back the offer. Obviously, after reading Raiders, Lucas would love it, as Kasdan would immediately get to work on Empire. Next, Lucas began shopping the script around Hollywood to find a studio to produce it. But even though Lucas was hot off of Star Wars, everyone turned him down for two reasons. First, in what became known as Lucas's killer deal, Lucas wanted the studio to put up all the money but have zero creative input, and allow him to retain control of the sequel rights and licensing rights, something everyone balked at. And second, while Kasdan was writing the script, Spielberg directed 1941, which ended up being a box office disappointment. Not only that, while making it, Spielberg went way over schedule and budget, something he did on his previous two films too. Except both of those films, Jaws and Close Encounters, were huge hits, so all was forgiven. But 1941 wasn't, leading studios to become hesitant about working with them. To his credit, Lucas refused to find another director. Ultimately, then Paramount Pictures president Michael Eisner entered negotiations on the strength of the script, and because he didn't want to pass up working with the dynamic duo of Lucas and Spielberg. However, Eisner demanded strong penalties against Lucas if the film went over budget and schedule, and also wanted sequel rights, which Lucas would agree to as long as he was involved in producing them. For Spielberg's part, after a long heart-to-heart -heart with Lucas, he was determined to come in on time and on budget, and decided to shoot writers just like the serials that inspired it fast. Spielberg would go on to say, On Raiders, I learned to like instead of love. If I liked a scene after I shot it, I printed it. I didn't shoot it again 17 times until I got the take that I loved. Spielberg was given 85 days to shoot Raiders, but he'd end up doing it in 73. As for who should play Indy, Spielberg suggested Harrison Ford, which Lucas quickly shot down, as he didn't want the actor to be the Robert De Niro to his Martin Scorsese, as Ford had already appeared in Lucas's American Graffiti, as well as his Star Wars films. Plus, Lucas was worried Ford would be hesitant to commit to a three-picture deal, which he refused to sign on Star Wars. After auditioning a number of actors, casting director Mike Fenton felt that Jeff Bridges was the most suitable for the role, but Lucas's wife Marcia favored and pushed for a then largely unknown TV actor named Tom Selleck. Lucas and Spielberg agreed and offered him the role. However, there was just one major problem. Selleck had just returned from Hawaii after shooting the pilot to Magnum P.I. for CBS, and was contractually obligated to Magnum P.I. if it were to be made into a full series. As Spielberg 
Lucas and Lucas tried negotiating with CBS to allow for Selleck to appear in Raiders, CBS, realizing Selleck was in demand, immediately greenlit Magnum P.I., forcing Selleck to drop out of Raiders. In a cruel twist of irony, however, the 1980 actor strike later put Magnum P.I. on hiatus for three months, which would have allowed Selleck to star as Indiana Jones, thus altering history as we know it. With Selleck unavailable and shooting about to begin in just a few weeks, Spielberg again suggested Harrison Ford. Lucas reluctantly agreed, and took the script to Ford, who loved it, and agreed to the three-picture deal. However, fans would get a glimpse of what Selleck would have been like as Indiana Jones in the Magnum P.I. episode Raiders of the Lost Art, that sees Magnum dress up as Indiana Jones and go on a similar adventure. For the part of Marion, Spielberg offered the part to his then-girlfriend Amy Irving, but after she had an affair with Willie Nelson while shooting Honeysuckle Rose, her and Spielberg broke up, costing her the part. Spielberg would then cast Karen Allen after seeing her in National Lampoon's Animal House, and thought she embodied the early 20th century leading ladies who equaled their male counterparts. The iconic name of the character was conceived by writer Lawrence Kasdan, whose grandmother-in-law was called Marion, and each day on his way to the studio in Los Angeles, he would drive past Ravenwood Court. For the part of Sala, the character was originally written as a Gunga Din type, kind of like a human version of a small creature from the Star Wars Cantina in an Earthbound adventure film. To play him, Spielberg offered the part to Danny DeVito, but he was unable to participate due to scheduling conflicts involving the filming of a sitcom Taxi. However, rumors suggest his agent was asking for too much money. Instead, Spielberg cast John Rhys Davis after seeing him in Shogun, leading him to jokingly ask Spielberg if he was proposing surgery to reduce his height. Todd was slightly different too, originally envisioned with a strange love like mechanical arm with a machine gun that fired through its forefinger, but this was cut due to budget constraints. Just like on Star Wars, Lucas would shoot several scenes for Raiders in Tunisia. You may even recognize this canyon where a rocket launcher equipped Indy confronts the Nazis for the Ark, as it's the same canyon used by Lucas to portray Tatooine in Star Wars. While shooting in Tunisia was bad enough, with temperatures exceeding 100 degrees, not helping matters was the fact that the entire cast and crew were suffering from food poisoning, except for Spielberg, who stuck to a diet of canned food. Stuntman Terry Richards had spent weeks practicing his sword skills for a long and elaborate sword fight with Ford, but Ford, feeling under the weather from dysentery and exhausted by the sweltering heat, suggested to Spielberg that he just shoot the sucker, creating this iconic moment. And speaking of iconic moments, or at least controversial moments, many fans have long since wondered how Indy survived the journey on the submarine. A deleted scene would have given us the answer, as it would have featured Indy securing himself to the sub's periscope, which he holds onto throughout the journey. However, Spielberg felt the scene looked poor, and decided to cut it out, hoping audiences wouldn't care how Jones survived the trip. After helping to save Star Wars in the editing room, Lucas's wife, Marsha, wasn't done, and after seeing a rough cut of Raiders, complained that there was no emotional closure for Indy and Marion, as originally the film ended with Indy delivering the Ark to the US government officials. This inspired Spielberg to go back and shoot a final exterior sequence on the steps of San Francisco City Hall, showing Indy and Marion together, bookending what would become an all-time great film, whose influence is still felt today. Thanks for watching everybody, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Bullets and Blockbusters for more great content. Thank you.